Hello, welcome to Zanzi Ores. My name is Connie. Today is Sunday, 11 of August. I'm right here in my home uh, in Adelaide. So I'm just going for my walk, my Sunday morning walk. It's a bit late, it's nice and sunny. So, yeah, the weather's been really good lately. I'm so surprised how the weather has been. It's been wonderful actually. I'm loving this weather. Even yesterday it's a lovely day. Um, this is not a good, uh, it's not good for farmers, but yeah, I'm just enjoying the sunniness, you know. So for you South Africans in Adelaide, actually the weather in winter is actually wet and gloomy. You know, sometimes you do get a bit of sun, sunny days like this one, but yeah, it's not really, not the same as in Pretoria and Johannesburg, where it can get very cold in the morning and evening, but sunny during the day. It's obviously dry most of the winter in South Africa, in actually in Johannesburg and Pretoria, which is where my family is from, and Enfreset as well, which is where all of my family lives. Um, yeah. So, that's what it is guys and I'm still recording so I can get a bit dry from this this thing here. Uh, yeah it's not a it's a beautiful day actually I love it. So I wanted to say something about today about regarding, regarding Miss SA uh, situation. I saw there's a winner. Congratulations to you. And there's a lot of uh, people, mostly from Africa and mostly from diaspora, the elite people, and from diaspora, and the people from Africa in general about her winning because Adichima is uh, was found to her mother is alleged that her mother may have com com committed identity fraud to give her a South African citizenship, okay? So now we have a winner. The winner is a South African. Pageant, you know, this can only be made in South Africa. Tell you that this only made in South Africa. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> yeah, so funny because yeah, because it's a like a beauty pageant. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh. But, you know, on a serious note, they are victims in this. And 
a lot of these victims of identity frauds that are not related to Adijima, I must say, those ones who are coming out now, there's many of them in South Africa, unfortunately, with identity fraud. That, yeah, that the uh, ID, the uh, document. So if you have a, South Africa has an ID. So in Australia, we don't, the one have uh, the ID is your privacy, it's 100 point ID. So you have to demonstrate, give them 100 point ID. So it means it could be your healthcare card, your Medicare equal to, uh, would be equivalent, Medicare is equivalent to national healthcare. That is currently, the bill's currently in parliament in South Africa to try and get a, a national healthcare system that can work for everybody. That one is not a law yet, it's still in parliament, but that once it's approved, it becomes the law that it will be equivalent to Medicare in South Africa, national health, uh, you know. It be, it be NHS, like similar to NHS in, in, in UK. So that's we really what. So if you had that card and your your bank card and your I your your driver's license gives you about seventy points or anything with your photograph in it gives you a bit higher than your passport and then a little bit gives you that hundred points. That's your identity. That's how they can prove that it's who you are but in South Africa how you they prove your identity is to the ID number the ID identification number when I say ID that's the acronym for identification number so so that ID it's you cannot open a bank account without an ID in South Africa if you're a legal migrant they give you one that's actually for you as a legal migrant that has a different number it'll be the same as Medicare if you're an immigrant uh, here in Australia you would have an, a Medicare but it will be different number for you it would different color actually I think they do it in color different colors anyway for certain migrants okay all right I don't, I'm not going to get through that, how that works, but you get an idea anyway. So, but in South Africa, the equivalent of your identification, it's your ID number. ID. So it's alleged this woman, her mother, Adichima's mother, during the time of her birth, or I don't know, time of the birth, but when she was an infant, I don't know when this happened, but it's alleged that she committed identity fraud that is alleged she hasn't gone to court yet so it's been put forward by the uh, minister by the home affairs department through their records by looking at this situation through and this was raised forward by citizens and and patriotic alliance patriotic alliance at the moment it looks like it is for south africans this one is patriotic as it say patriotic for south africa so it comes across in this government of national unity. It actually comes as the leader. Uh, and we're able to respond to South Africans, the regular South Africans, not the elites, because the elites were going on and accusing South Africans with all sorts of names, calling them Afrophobe. You know, I didn't even know that there's a term called Afro Afrophobe, but apparently is a thing now, you know? There's another term, you know, they put phobia there and put afro, so now we've got afrophobia. Yes, so there is a lot of uh, chatter about these terms that people are putting out there because of um, a lot of things that are happening. But I just say to you guys, um, as South Africans, we are we see ourselves as Rainbow Nation. And the reason why we see ourselves that way is that we're very diverse in our views, in our cultures, in our languages, in our ethnicity, in our races. Okay? That's another thing. So the current Miss South Africa, she's a South African. She embodies another thing in terms of that also. As a national, we embody humility, Ubuntu, that I am because you are. Okay? As we have seen in the last few weeks or days about the Adichima uh, controversy 
and she ended up pulling out from Miss as a, uh, from Miss SA far as a finalist. It's because of her um, behavior. It's not scrutinized because she may have been scrutinized because of her last name. I cannot say no because you know I know even you know any society even in America your first name in America can discriminate you from actually being called for an interview and even here in Australia your last name can actually result in you not being called for an interview because of your last name that's part of the society that we live in okay she the people may have looked at her last name and sort of she, her last name is uh, it's not our last name we don't can't recognize the last name that's 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 what I'm assuming that may have happened, but we cannot we cannot ignore the fact the controversy and also the legal implication for her that now it's alleged that her mother stole an identity of a South African woman. There's a lot of weird victims that are part of this game that are actually are suffering as a result of this identity uh, stolen identity. So you cannot come here and defend criminality criminality. Now, as much as uh, you may feel some ways about her and feel like she should have because she was black, because in your culture, in mostly Western society, people are viewed based on their skin color, based on their race, based on the stuff. South Africa had that system during apartheid, but that's why we abolish apartheid, because we wanted a system where people can be uh, able to contribute based on the value system, what they stand for, and we can relate to. Adichima, unfortunately, she did not relate to the culture that she was meant to represent. She said she was, her mother was a Mozambican Zulu. I mean, she could not speak Zulu. She could not relate culturally with her values and even her behavior. And when the questions about her identity, she could not come out and explain to South Africans, where is her mother? What's the situation? That openness and honest did not, wasn't displayed by her, you know. So she could not respond when she was required to do so. She could not uh, unite South Africa when there were actually a division about why, what's her identity, what's going on with her situation. So, and then allegedly later we found, uh, then later, not and now later we found that there's a strong evidence her mother may have, may have uh, committed fraudulent uh, activities by giving her an identity of South African mother. So how her mother, um, I'm assuming that her mother changed her, register her using South African woman. So therefore stolen that, stole that identity of a South African woman. So Adichima can become a South African citizen. That's my assumption. The investigation is still going. That she is not, so, <laughs> Did she know about that? Did she know about these fraudulent activities? That's a question of the investigator. They are investigating whether she knew about it. If she knew about it, she would the, the charges would be laid on her if she knew upon investigation. If she didn't know about it, she um, she's not going to be beneficiary of a crime because she got where she is because of a false identity. Okay, so. No, there's nobody who's going to reward criminality. So she's still going to be immigrant. She's going to be immigrant after. If she, if after investigation, she, she is found to be innocent. Okay. Um, she was a child at a time, but as an adult, did her mother disclose this? Did her mother tell her that she was not a South African? Did she knew about it, the fraud? If she knew it as an adult, that her mother disclosed it to her and she did not disclose it to home affairs, to authority, she's an accomplice to an alleged crime. That is where the investigation is leaning at the moment. We will be uh, looking into it, see what is the outcome for this one. So it doesn't help for all of you celebrity out there uh, feeling sorry for her. When we know there's millions of victims of identity theft in South Africa, that are actually today without any identification. It's not gonna help you to uh, uh, be there and sympathize with somebody who benefited from crime. That's, be, that's something I want you to be aware of. So another thing I want you to be aware of is that South Africa, we are diverse. So we are diverse, we call ourselves a rainbow nation for, for that reason. So 
Miss South Africa right now is white woman. She represents her culture. So being to be a South African, you need to embody humility. You need to embody Ubuntu. I am because you are. And that how you embody that is your behavior, how you behave. You know, if you behave with this cockiness, if you come across as really not with disregard of people's uh, opinion, you don't listen to people, you don't respond to people. And I think that's where the problem was with her. And also she doubled down with that letter. When she um, pulled out of Miss Essay, that letter is tone deaf letter. I could not believe that she would write a letter like this. But, you know, that's where the problem is. It is the clash of identity. It's a clash of culture and the humility. There was no humility in that letter. That letter just is a tone deaf letter, self-serving letter uh, about her safety of her family. No, it's not about your safety of your family. You got out there of Miss SA because of question about your identity. And we now have no, and we know from the Home Affairs Department is allegedly that your mother con co committed identity fraud. So if you can't acknowledge that part in that letter, that what the circumstances that led to this, and you double down on this stuff, then it just, um, you know, it just makes it clear that they, they were correct to actually, um, you know, raise the issue to the Home Affairs Department about her, about her. You know, all of these things came across because of citizens of South Africa. It's not because of journalists were very uh, good at investigating, being investigative journalism. No, because our journalism is actually getting dead because people, journalists, they just do clickbait. Whatever is popular on, on YouTube, they just say it as it is, as if it's a fact. It's not. You know, you got to start uh, investigating these issues and, and provide, uh, you know, be seen as actually providing a very balanced opinion from both sides, not just um, attacking one side and leave the other side, you know, feeling that they're not being heard. So this is, uh, yeah, it's a beauty contest that is, um, yeah, I'm glad to see this one end. It ended really well that the winner got the winner, that it's still, the story is still continuing. The beauty contest is likely to result in a lot of people going in jail. This is what I like about it. That a lot of criminals are likely to be to actually be locked up as a result of this beauty contest. Just imagine if she had stayed at home and not actually participated in a beauty contest. This thing wouldn't have been uncovered by Home Affairs. The South African wouldn't have actually raised concern about her. That oh, we're concerned about her. What she's saying that she's her mother was Zulu, but she spoke none of the Zulu language. She's she's saying that she grew up in Soweto, in a very in the heartbeat of South Africa, Soweto, very tight knit community. But no one would say that she they knew her. So they were concerned, legitimately concerned. Those concerned were not just because you know they checked at her ID. Her ID was legit because it had the numbers, the South African numbers of ID of someone who is actually a citizen, because we know that she acquired that number by fraud, allegedly true fraudulent activity of her mother. She's a beneficiary of a crime. Okay, when you sympathize with her, you're sympathizing with somebody who benefited from a crime, allegedly a crime, okay? So be mindful and also be mindful that there are a lot of victims who are today, as we speak, 11 of August 2024, are still without their identity. They cannot open a bank account. They can't work, cannot travel. They cannot have passport. So as a result of this criminality, so you, people were saying that they're tone deaf to the reality of the everyday person who is suffering as a result of crime. Just be careful when you discuss these matters that are very, um, you know, triggering for people. That you don't, you not be seen as somebody who is actually uh, advocating for criminality. She is likely, if she is, um, you know, if she's innocent, uh, she didn't know about this as an adult. She didn't know about these activities, criminality, alleged criminality of her mother. 
she would like to, to get the, you know, to be, you know, to continue with her studies and she will still be an immigrant. She won't be a citizen. They will not reward criminality. No, no country rewards criminality. You can't say that, you know, your, your dad was, for example, if your dad was a, a drug dealer and bought a, 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 this beautiful home for you using, with the money acquired to drug dealings, and when they found that the money that actually used to buy the ha the house that you live in is a drug is from a uh, proceed from crime you cannot say that oh i please allow me to stay in the house that's ridiculous that means you're benefiting from the crime they will take the house and sell the house they will have to take the house so you can't you don't have to find yourself another house they can help you to find another house but definitely you can't stay in that house. This is the situation she's going to be in. She's not going to be an, a South African citizen. If this in, in, in fact is true, there's high evidence that they, it, it is true, that what's registered in the Home Affairs Department as her mother is another South African woman's mother. And they, would, they actually linked that. They could see it. Because maybe that mother came to South Africa to the home affairs and look and wanting her identity back, but them, that mother could not get her identity back because Adichina Smare stole it from her. They could see it through the and through that yeah through help of the department through corrupt officials. You know, corrupt. Yeah, so I'm so glad that this beauty contest, beauty contest can result in criminality charges being put to people. Just a beauty contest. Yeah, this one. Yeah, I'll be following this story because it's South Africa and I'm South African and I live in Australia. Thank you guys for listening to my channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, press the like button and the bell so you know when I, when I post the new material. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye.